Hey everyone, hi, this is uh, Laura Gallagher, founder of Outgang.studio. I know how complicated it is to extract a high res out of uh, Maros Designer and import it back in ZBrush in a way that gives us a clean geometry, subdivision uh, levels, and that also preserves UVs. I prepared a cheat sheet of sorts for you to follow left to right with branching paths based on simple questions that will help you figure out what is the best workflow for you to follow in order to extract a high res out of Marvel's designer and bring it back into ZBrush. You'll find a link to this cheat sheet in the description below. This video was recorded live with Outgang community uh, members during one of our weekly character art lectures. This video covers in great detail the last few steps of the workflow. I'm sharing it here with you on uh, YouTube since I know that these last few steps can actually be quite tricky. I hope that this workflow will be useful for you in the future and that you will adopt it during your next garment creation projects. I believe that everyone should have access to quality education given by industry professionals in their chosen field. And I'm certainly doing my part in sharing my knowledge with people who do uh, character art. If you like this kind of uh, uh, content and you want to see uh, more of it, please consider subscribing here on YouTube. It helps a lot. Thanks for watching. How do we turn this back into a higher res then? How do we do that? Super simple. Let's go to mesh and let's turn on this smooth option. Uh, and let's go into the dialog box here just to go through the options. And you pretty much want to keep these on. So you want to be in exponential division levels, just put it at the maximum and just make sure that you're in Maya Catmull Clark here. And that's pretty much all that you need to do. So you click apply. It's going to turn this and it's going to subdivide it uh, pretty much as if you were subdividing this inside of ZBrush. It's going to give you pretty much the exact same thing. And let's just delete by type history once more. Let's get rid of that. Cool. All right. Reimport to high res. And now the UVs match between the two pieces. So again, source first, destination second. Let's go back into our transfer attributes. Let's check. We are still transferring vertex position and in UV space. Life is good. Let's click apply. And there you go. Delete by type, history. And this will give you a one for one transfer in the vertex position between the two meshes. So, what's great is that uh, you guys can see here. So, now it becomes a lot obvious the kind of undercut that I had here. Um, Depending how flowy your mesh is, you'll have a, a uh, you'll have a lot more of those left and right, you know, as far as the folds are uh, concerned. And this workflow will transfer them perfectly. You'll get a perfect transfer of the undercuts uh, that you have, uh, which would not be possible if you're doing a simple projection inside of ZBrush. So once more, let's erase the high res. Okay, well, I mean, this this is starting to look pretty good, but we don't necessarily have any thickness right now. We obviously don't have any subdivision levels, so we need to obviously address these things. So, and we certainly want this inside of ZBrush, of course. So let's export this out. We're done with the Maya part. Export selection, let's export this out somewhere. So this will be our uh, Maya export. All right, so we can go back to ZBrush. So what's gonna happen now? Well, we will re-import our requirement Let's go back into our poly, uh, poly groups. Let's do auto group of UVs once more. Of course, I'm sure that you all know at this point that we can simply do a reconstruct subdiv to reconstruct the uh, up until or down uh, until we get to the lowest subdivision level. I'm sure you guys already know that. And you know, that's pretty much the trick that we're gonna use here. We're gonna go into uh, our geometry. We're simply going to reconstruct all the way down, as you guys can see. So we can uh, extract the low res back out of this which gives us our subdivision levels. But we still don't have any thickness on this. So let's not do that then. Let's not reconstruct for now. We have one more step that we need to do before we can do that, and that is to add the thickness. So how do we do that? We do that with a function called panel loops. Now, if you've never used panel loops before, uh, it's uh, it's not necessarily all that complex as an option, but it's uh, it may not be obvious to uh, to understand what it does at first. Uh, it simply is a way to simply shell different objects. You know, like if you're inside of uh, Maya, you have access to a shell uh, a shell option so that you can you know add thickness to something. If you're inside 3ds Max, it's pretty much the same thing. It's also called shell. There's no shell in here. They've gone ahead and called it panel loops because everything about ZBrush is always unique. 
Um, but we can't just go ahead and just click on this because if, if I do that, well, we're going to wind up with this here, which isn't necessarily all that nice. Uh, so here's the kind of options that I like to use in there. The basic ones. Inside of uh, panel loops, the polish option, let's put it to zero. The bevel option, sometimes I like to put it to zero, but actually in this case, keeping at 50 is actually a pretty good idea. Uh, elevation, let's put it to zero. And that's it. We also at the same time want to turn on this ignore groups option. Uh, else, uh, as you can see, panel loop will simply do a separation, a shell based on the poly groups that we have. But we don't necessarily want to do that. We want to keep the surface continuous as much as possible. So we turn on poly groups. Uh, we turn on ignore groups. Now that leaves us with uh, three other options that aren't necessarily all that clear. Uh, I guess the first one that's easy to explain is the bevel profile here. So this little curve that's here. Uh, if I click on it again, you guys can see that what this does, it just controls the shape of the border. You guys can see the kind of border that I have here, the sort of the very sort of angular result that I have, and it obviously matches with this here. So this controls uh, the shape of the border. Because we're doing cloth, it'd be probably kind of nice to have something that's nice and round. What I need to do is just take the extreme, the, the points that are at the extremity of this particular curve, and just move them on until they're at about uh, 0 0.5 of height. Uh, so that I don't lose volume as I'm using this. And after that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click in here and just add a few points until I create this kind of nicer curve. Uh, something like that. I think there's an extra point here. There you go. Something like that. You don't need to be precise. You can spend more time on this if you want, but I think that this is totally fine. So if I do the panel loop again, you guys will see that now I have something that's nicer and rounder. But of course, you know, because we want to reconstruct this, uh, if I simply do a panel loop right now and I do a reconstruct, it's obviously not going to work anymore because zebra simply cannot reconstruct the edges that I have on the border here. So we need to be a bit more, we need to be a bit more clever about this, right? So what happens when we do a reconstruct? ZBrush literally uh, erases one edge on two edges, right? So here uh, you guys can see what this looks like. If I do a reconstruct once, you know, half the edges are gone. If I do a reconstruct again, half the edges are gone again, so on and so forth. So there's a, a bit of a power of two thing happening here. And we want the border to reconstruct just like everything else reconstructs. So uh, it's actually very, very simple uh, as a math equation. This little loops value right here, you guys can see right now it's set to five. What we want this to be, we want this to be exactly equal to two the value two to the power of the number of subdivisions that we have entered inside of Maya here. So in here, in our mesh smooth options, we had a value of four for the division levels. So we want to say two to the power of four. Uh, it just so happens that it's equal to 16. So we want to enter 16 into our loop option right here. And by having 16 loops, this is going to happen. We're going to do our panel loops. Here's what's going to happen when we'll do our reconstruct. Our border will reconstruct itself perfectly, just like it does uh, elsewhere on the garment. The only thing that's missing now then is the thickness. What do we do with that? You know, because obviously if I do panel loop right here, this is like very very thick, right? Like this is way thicker than what I would expect cloth to be. So how do we fix that? Well, there's this little thickness slider right here. So it's like okay, well this is too high, so I guess I want to bring this down. You know. And you can kind of play around with this until you uh, get a thickness that you find is acceptable for your cloth, you know, like you can totally do that. It's very, very simple to do, of course. But this value here also, like you're kind of looking at it right here and it's like 0 .00, 0 0.002, like, like what does that represent exactly? You know, like does that even mean anything? You know, like what if like I want to have a thickness that's exactly 0.3 centimeters, you know, like I, I want to have thickness that is exactly 0 0.3 centimeters because we have that option when we're inside of Marvel's designer, you know, we can certainly set the cloth to be uh, thick with an exact millimeter of value that we want. We can control that very, very well, you know. So, you know, if you guys take a look at this here, this is like super, super thin right now. And this is actually controlled. If I select the default fabric that's applied on this here, right, there's this little thickness value right here. Right now it's set to 0 0.24 millimeters, which is really not a lot, right? 
So what happens if I set this to 0 point, or, or write it to 1, so that it's 1 millimeter thick, you know? Well, we're going to wind up with cloth that, you know, has that exact value there. There you go. So that's 1 millimeter thick cloth. So like, that's great. It's like, okay, well, all right. So we can have that degree of precision inside of Mars Designer. How can we have that same degree of precision inside of ZBrush? We could naively think then I should enter the same value here. So we're working centimeters. So this should be 0 0.1, so that it's one millimeter, right? That's kind of how that would go. Let's press panel loops. And now this happens. It's like, Laura, thanks for showing me how to do like a boa or something. On, like around the neck of my character, but that's not quite what I was expecting. That's not quite what I was expecting when setting this down to 0 0.1 millimeters. It's like, yeah, I hear you. It's not what I was expecting either. So what's what's happening then? Like, what is the correlation between this thickness value and this thickness value inside of Marvel's Designer? I won't get into the whole reasons why, because it would actually be quite complex to explain it. It's not that complex, but just by virtue of time, I'll avoid answering that question now. But here's what you have to do, all right? You have to take the value of thickness that you want in terms of centimeters. So we want this to be 0 0.1 centimeter, which is one millimeter, of course. You have to take that value that you want and you have to simply divide it. When you go here to your export, export, we want to divide 0 0.1 by the scale value that's right here. So right now the scale value is set to 51.3, as you guys can see. So, okay, so let's go to, let's open a calculator. Let's say, all right, so 0 0.1 divided by uh, 51.3 equals uh, 0 0.002. Okay, starting to make a bit, bit more sense compared to what we had there before. So let's enter that here, 0 0.002. Panel loop thickness, there you go. I can even like, if you don't believe me here, I can even use the transpose line and kind of like precisely calculate the width of this. And it's pretty much exactly 0 0.1. So that's done. Last thing we need to do, reconstruct all the way down to zero. I suppose the last thing that we could do is maybe just uh, apply just a very slight uh, polish on this perhaps. Let me just create a new layer here just for the sake of it. Create a new layer. Let's go to uh, deformation. And perhaps the last thing that we could we could end with perhaps is just to apply a little polish by features on this. Just to clean up, just to clean this up a little bit more. 